Thank you. Roll call. All right, Supervisor Smith. Present. Supervisor Gruger. Here. Supervisor Schneider. Here. Supervisor Montemayor. Here. Supervisor Clark. Here. Supervisor Nelson. Here. Supervisor Kochek. Here. Supervisor Koch. Here. Uh, oh. Supervisor Schobert. Supervisor Brower. Here. Supervisor Jorgensen. Here. Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Here. Supervisor Nenning. Here. Supervisor Abler. Here. Supervisor Kulo. Here. Supervisor Dan. Here. Supervisor Wagner. Here. Supervisor Immel. Here. Supervisor OJ. Present. Supervisor Hoffman. Here. Supervisor Hilmelink. Here. Supervisor Bosman. Here. Supervisor Veldman. Here. Supervisor Gehring? Here. Supervisor Kastriti? Here. 25 supervisors present. Thank you, John. <coughs> uh, the administration of oaths of office will be performed by our county clerk, John Dolson. John? All right. If you would. Doing the oath, right? If you would all stand, please. <coughs> And if you would raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the Office of County Board Supervisor to the best of my ability, so help me God. Thank you. Thank you, John. You do need to sign that old send and they'll be, collect they'll be collecting those later. Next, introduction of, uh, I don't think there's too many department heads here, but uh, an introductory statements by the county administrator. Adam? introduction. Actually, that was for our magnificent seven. We have seven new county board supervisors here this evening. We just went through an orientation, sharp group, diverse group, and from this point forward, we shall refer to you fondly as the magnificent seven. What do you think? Oh, the other board members are shaking their heads. Are you kidding me? Well, congratulations. 
It's nice to have you all here this evening. It's a little surreal to look out and see masks and spread out at the UW Sheboygan Theater. But my compliments to all involved. Uh, we are going to do some introductions tonight, but we're going to do it in a much safer manner. Some of our department heads are here this evening, but I'm going to introduce all of the department heads so at least the seven newest board members are well aware of them. And for those of you who have been around for a while, you might enjoy the photos. Okay. I'm going to stand to the side here a little bit. So the administration building. This is where um, many departments meet. And what am I hitting? Am I going up this way? Top one? All right, that's your county administrator. I've been working for you for 21 years now. I have the pleasure of working with 19 department heads. I, as the new supervisors just learned, I directly supervise the appointed department heads. Obviously, we have six elected department heads. Treat them all with similar expectations. We've got a good group, and we have a very broad organization. 19 departments working with 850 employees administering over 200 programs and services, a lot going on. $158 million budget. Also in the administration building is our planning and conservation director, Aaron Brault. Does, does this mic work? Yes, it does. Yeah, I know, I'll go back. Can you hear me? I'm going to stand over by my executive assistant, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Okay. Did you just take me back to the first? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Human Resources Director. This is the newest member of our team, Dennis Miller. Just started six weeks ago. <coughs> our new board members just had a chance to meet Dennis. We're so grateful to have him here. Did he get thrown into the fire with the coronavirus? All hands on deck with working with our employees. We have 180 employees now working at home. Dennis has helped with policy development, FMLA, sick leave, benefits. What does that look like? How do people work at home? How do we do that safely? Working with IT and others. He's done a remarkable job in a very short period of time. Has a budget of five staff and a budget of just under $800,000. Planning and Conservation Director Aaron Brault. Second time he's been up here, he's pretty popular. He's been with us for 13 years. He has 14 staff, a budget of 2.2 million. He'll be working with the Planning, Resources, Agriculture, and Extension Committee. Really a good guy, gets things done, has been very involved with things like our Sheboygan River Harbor cleanup, and most recently the tree sale. We have sold literally over a million trees uh, during his tenure in Sheboygan County. And that's going on right now. So look forward to meeting Aaron Brault. Register of Deeds. Now take a look at that photo. I don't think that was taken in our HR department, Fran. Do you think that was? I don't think that was taken in the, in the conference room there. So Ellen Schleicher, elected Register of Deeds. She's been with us 14 years now. Which is, it's amazing putting this together, or Elaine put it together, uh, how quickly the years have passed. She has seven staff and a budget of 661000 Ellen Schleicher, registered deeds, that's on the second floor in the county administration building. Finance director, Wendy Sharnan. Wendy's been with us five years. She has 16 staff. Her department budget is $1.7 million, but like me, she works with the $150 million budget, pulling that together. Wendy does a really, really nice job working with finance committee, all the department heads, obviously myself, and making sure that we're fiscally responsible working within the county board's budget parameters. She does nice work. Our county clerk, John Dolson. Everyone in the room knows John Dolson. He just ran a really well-orchestrated election in Sheboygan County. John and his staff coordinate that. I was so pleased and proud of our municipal clerks and how they handled the elections here. I thought they did it safely and thoughtfully. I wish a few others, other areas in the state would have followed Sheboygan County's lead, but a credit to John and all involved. He's been with us seven years, has three staff, and a budget of $400,000. Treasurer of Real Property, another elected official like our county clerk, like our Register of Deeds, 
Laura used to work in our finance department actually years ago, left and then returned as our elected treasurer. She's been with us 17 years in that role. She has seven staff, budget of just under $800,000. First floor in the administration building to the right. Uh, we now have a glass enclosed uh, office, one, an area that we wanted to enhance safety. And of course, they do very important work and not real glamorous work collecting property taxes. Economic development, not a county department, not a county department head, but Joe Sheehan, that face may look familiar, he was the Sheboygan school superintendent for a number of years, two years ago came on to be the director of our Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation. It's a quasi-public, private organization. They also are housed in the administration building complements of the county and we provide some financial support as does the city, other local units of government, and the private sector. They have four staff, budget of about 600,000. Moving on to the courthouse. Some people ask, where's that county administration building? Well, you're all gonna know that real well, particularly our new board members. The courthouse is just kitty corner. And look at that new front entrance. We put in secured entrance a couple of years ago, improved the parking, the safety, of the building. It's a beautiful grand facility and a number of important departments work there, such as our district attorney. He is an elected official as well, state employee. He's not a county employee, but a state employee, though he has a number of county employees working for him. He's been in the office for 14 years, has 23 staff, a budget of about 1.1 million. Right now, things in the district attorney's office are a little slower because of the coronavirus but it is going to pick up immensely once we start getting it behind us. Clerk of Courts, Melody Lorgi. Melody has been in the Clerk of Courts office for 36 years. She's probably one of our most, if not the most, uh, senior uh, employees who's working as a department head, though you certainly wouldn't know it looking at her. Wonderful, thoughtful, kind person. They do very important work in the clerk of court's office. She's an elected official as well. 24 staff, $2.5 million budget. If you're paying a fine, a forfeiture, you're going generally to the clerk of court's office. Court commissioner, Ryan O'Rourke. So the county, just as we discussed with our new supervisors a few minutes ago, we have, like the state, a judicial, judicial system. We have five circuit courts. We also have a court commissioner, and his role is similar to a circuit court in that he's processing judicial decisions. He's supporting the five circuit courts. Ryan's been with us for four years. He has three staff, very small office, though a lot of people go through it, budget of just under $400,000. Uh, to put it in perspective, often these positions move on to judgeship. Rebecca Persick was our former family court commissioner. Now she's a judge. Terry Burke was a former family court commissioner, was a judge, has since retired. So a very important position. Medical examiner, generally the person most people don't want to spend a lot of time talking to. Chris Nearing is a really uh, good man. We're fortunate to have him on the team. He worked with the former coroner, elevated or changed to a medical examiner a number of years ago by the board. He works about two-thirds time, and he has some of the uh, four staff that work with him and really interested and passionate about the work he does and I think does a very nice job. He as well has been very engaged with coronavirus plans and preparations and again, discussions that most people really don't want to be that involved with. Next slide, please. Building services, Jim to Beast. <laughs> Jim to Beast, we're not sure, he either used his college graduation picture or he just came from a wedding when he had his picture taken in HR. <laughs> now I think he just updated that. But Jim DeBeast has been our building services director for 20 years. He's an engineer. He works with the property committee. Uh, has 30 staff that he works with. They do really important work keeping all of our buildings clean and <coughs> safe. He has a significant budget. And what I really admire and appreciate about Jim DeBeast is his <coughs> engineering background project management and attention to detail. Both Jim DeBeast and our Highway Commissioner, Greg Schnell, 
uh, with two key leaders involved with our $23 million transportation complex. And between the two of them, we came in under budget. And Jim really did a nice job. Next slide, please. Information technology. Now, Chris Lewinsky is with us today. He's in the back room. You may have saw him <coughs> earlier. If you're able to turn your head, maybe you could just see Chris in the back. He could give you a little wave, right? Take a look at that beard. <laughs> There's been quite significant growth in his beard since hiring him five years ago. Bill Gearing, I don't know if you're taking note of this, but that is quite a beard. So uh, we're real pleased to have Chris with us. He has built and has a wonderful team to work with. Uh, definitely a go-to person with IT, <coughs> technology, assistance with the iPads, just helping with a meeting like this. Chris is always in demand in helping make good things happen. He has 10 staff and a $2.5 million budget. Chris was real involved with the Ring of Fiber that we recently put in with the school district of the city. He's now working on doing an extension to Rocky Knoll, the transportation complex. He does a lot of the work, work behind the scenes that we may not be fully aware of, but we sure appreciate it when it's in place, and we sure know it when it doesn't work. Next slide, please. Health and Human Services. Our Health and Human Services Director is, I don't know if I should use the clicker anymore, Chris, I mean, you're, you're anticipating, right? Yes. Matt Strittmotter. Matt's been with us for just a year and a half now. He followed Tom Edgebrecht, who was here for, I think, close to seven or nine years. Uh, Tom did nice work for, for us, and Matt Strittmotter is as well. He's from La Crosse area. He was a division manager there for about 20 years, and really brought some nice ideas and a different perspective from La Crosse, and immediately uh, implemented some nice improvements in part of their budget and working with his liaison committee, which is the Health Human Services Committee. So Matt, again, only a year and a half. The jury's still out. I mean, you got to be here a couple <laughs> years before we know if it's going to work, right, Greg? That's right. But uh, no, he's doing a nice job. 208 staff, $35 million budget. As I shared with the new supervisors a little earlier, over 44 programs in that department. You could, that department could be a county within itself. There is so much that goes on in health and human services, so critically important to our community. When I started in this role a little over 20 years ago, I knew nothing about health and human services. And the longer I'm here, the more I have just my respect and appreciation for that department is sky high. Incredibly important work that they do helping people with mental illness, behavioral health, people in crisis, remarkable work. And right now, this department and their public health division deserve all the credit and love and appreciation that we can show for the tremendous job they're doing with the plans, the preparations, the response to the coronavirus. Remarkable. Just remarkable. Next slide, please. Aging and Disability Resource Center. Back in the day, this used to be the Land and Water Conservation Department in UW Extension. A number of years ago, and it was somewhat, somewhat controversial, uh, we consolidated UW Extension with UW Sheboygan right here. And it actually worked out very, very well. And then over time, there's been some changes to that facility. So aging and disability has been there for some time now. And I think they're doing a real good work there. And then Veteran Services just moved in there. It's been about a year or so. And Todd Rector says that the veterans have really appreciated uh, the central location and, and ample parking and they don't have to go through the front security and wind through and get back to the annex. It's worked out quite well. So Todd is relatively new. He's been with the county for 16 years, but he's only been a department head for about a year. He has three staff, $315,000 budget, and of course, uh, providing vital services to veterans and their families. Next slide, please. Sheriff's Department. You saw Sheriff Corey Racer here <laughs> early, earlier. Uh, the sheriff oversees an immense amount of important work and responsibilities. Corey, we're so fortunate that Corey is our sheriff. 29 years. 29 years of public service in law enforcement. Very knowledgeable, wonderful demeanor, professional, kind. He's just his entire career helped make good things for Sheboygan County. 29 years of service, 198 employees, a $21 million budget. And uh, for those of us
us who haven't had that much involvement with law enforcement or have never served on the law committee, uh, they do a lot of heavy lifting between law enforcement and health and human services. Uh, they do tremendously important work in the community. Next slide. Rocky and Elm talk about important work as we shared with the uh, seven new board members. It wasn't that long ago as many of our board members in the room know. We had three facilities. We had over six million dollars subsidizing uh, three nursing homes. We had more beds and more cost than any county in the state. We set us right sized and now we have the Rocky Hill Healthcare Center, which is a grand facility, one that our governor actually used to uh, live in and his father used to be a doctor at. Next slide. And right now, Kayla Clinton is our administrator. And she's young and she's sharp. Very hard work very dedicated, has built a good team, uh, and has her hands full, as you can imagine, with the coronavirus possibility and what that would look like if that got into Rocky Knoll, just as it did at Sunday Ridge. Such appreciation for the contingency plan she's put in place, the team she has in place, our health care providers are doing incredible work in a stressful time. 180 employees there, over a $13 million budget. Most of that are state and federal dollars, federal dollars predominantly. Our tax levy right now for Rocky Knoll is about $800,000. Again, to put that in perspective, <coughs> in 2007, when we sold Sunny Ridge, it was $6.1 million. So we've gone in the right direction. Next slide. Transportation, look at that facility. We gotta get a little better picture of the sunny day. Maybe get the sheriff's uh, uh, camera out there. What's that called? That, that drone, right, Elaine? Get that drone out there. But look at that facility. $23.5 million facility. We had over 750 people show up for the open house. And we consolidated um, four facilities into one, essentially. We really have made some changes in our transportation organization. And as I mentioned earlier, Jim Tavis was a big part of that. Next slide, please. This transportation director, uh, Greg Schnell, just did, did a tremendous job with his leadership. 14 years. And yes, that is an updated photo. At some board meeting or department head meeting in the future, we will show the picture from 14 years ago. Have a little fun with our friend Greg. But Greg really has done an outstanding job leading the transportation department. It's one of the few full service transportation or highway operations, county operations in the state. Thanks to Roger Distruti and Tom Wagner and the board as a whole, we implemented a sales tax and directed all of that toward our transportation, property tax relief, sharing it with other municipalities. And uh, we haven't used the red cent of that on the transportation complex itself, but between that new facility, the efficiencies we garnered, and the revenue source we put in place, we've got a good transportation system and we're going to keep it that way. 95 employees, $21.3 million budget. Next slide, please. The airport. Years ago, the airport was a separate department. We used to have 20 departments. In fact, I think way back in the day, we had upwards of 30 departments. There's been a fair amount of consolidation over the years. But the airport now also falls under Greg's jurisdiction as a transportation director. Next slide. That's the U.S. Customs facility that's in progress. Beautiful photo. And if you haven't had a chance of late, I encourage you to drive over there. I haven't been there for a few weeks now, and I'm looking forward to getting a tour. I occasionally will swing by, as I mentioned, TT, as I mentioned to the new supervisors, take TT for the airport to the north, and you can see the progress going on there. Next slide. Matt Grenoble uh, just started. He's pretty recent to the team. He reports directly to Greg, and he comes from the airport in uh, what was it? Waukesha, right? Um, really had some nice experience, nice background, and so far so good. Three staff, small operation, but doing a good job. Next slide. UW Extension, I mentioned earlier, used to be out in Sheboygan Falls, is now right here at UW Sheboygan. And that really created some synergies for collaboration, sharing resources, provided them with better and newer space, a lot more meeting space, open space for the public, for 4-Hers, it worked out well. Next slide. 
Cindy is currently the director. She's been with us for three years. She is a state employee, the one of the 19 department heads. She has nine staff and a budget of just under 500,000. That department as well would, would report to the Planning, Resources, and Ag and Extension Committee. Next slide. We have an interesting situation in Sheboygan County that we don't have an internal corporation council. We have a contracted corporation council. And when I started years ago, I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Most larger counties have their own corp council in-house. Why don't we? I'll tell you why. Because we have a history that goes 50 years or longer with Hop Newman and Humke. They have outstanding attorneys. The last one we had as our corp council was Carl Bizzing. Carl brought crystal fever into the fold in 2006. She had all this transition time, and, and just last year, 2019, she became our lead corporation counsel. She hit the ground running. She does an excellent job, and as I shared with all the new supervisors, please don't hesitate to reach out to her if you have any questions about open meetings, or agendas, uh, ordinances. Crystal does an excellent job. Next slide. Now that picture in May, well that was probably just taken last week. <laughs> Next slide. Okay. I'll return to the podium. This is Chairman Wagner's last meeting. Chairman Wagner said to me, don't give him any attention. So I'm not going to. I'm going to focus on the executive committee and the county board. <laughs> Every year, what we do is we put together a little high-end state of the county, right? And we try to develop a top 10 list or thereabouts. Some of the key accomplishments that we collectively accomplished. So if I just go back four years, and quickly summarize what we, as a Sheboygan County Board and department heads and an executive committee and a community have accomplished for our seven new board members in the room, I think you're going to be blown away with what collaboration can accomplish. In 2016, when I think Chairman Wagner was elected chair, but let's focus on the board. We uh, collectively decided as a county board that we were going to enhance courthouse security, and that was approved by the county board. We, as a county board, went to partnership with GHT, which saved the county over a million dollars, rather than having our own self-fund. That year, the county board passed a budget that had a 1% levy decrease. The county board has a track record of being very fiscally responsible. We worked with the city, the school district, and Chris Lewinsky, as I mentioned earlier, was a big part of this and established a ring of fiber, which now we have far more enhanced capability, 23 miles of fiber network that all three entities are sharing and working in collaboration. The transportation complex was approved, and we had a groundbreaking that year. We established a drug and alcohol treatment court. We took on and upgraded our radio system and completed combined dispatch. We also that year implemented a county sales tax and revenue sharing program which, as I mentioned earlier as well, the board had to get it done and show the leadership for that. Roger Destrudy was a key leader involved with that as well. The next year, in 2017, we sold the Pennsylvania Avenue property. You might recall just up from the courthouse there where the new Penn site is, that was a dilapidated brownfield. I went into one of the homes we tore down and they were just shambles and, of course, we can look at what's going on there now. That first year in 2017, with the use of the sales tax revenue, we delivered. We did over 30 miles of overlay. We shared revenue with our, our local municipalities. We reduced property taxes. We applied some of it to debt service. 
we have created an opioid detox service enhancement to address the opioid crisis. And that continues to be an area of concern, but we took some effort and initiative there. And that strong fiscal track record, in 2017, we had a 1.38% property tax levy increase. In 2018, the Pennsylvania Avenue redevelopment was uh, proceeding and we constructed a new garage. Why does Jim Tabeast and his staff like that new garage that's in the back parking lot? We had a road diet and put two roundabouts in in Kohler. Did that turn out well? And that was a vision largely of Aaron Brault to have a road diet there and put in a path and more green space. And of course, Greg's team did an excellent job with the roundabouts. Rocky Knoll, we've really emphasized the importance of quality care. They had a five-star rating that year, and they've maintained it ever since. We started our planning for the U.S. Customs Facility, the planning. Amsterdam Dunes that we had purchased previously in 2018, we totally recouped and celebrated the $4.2 million of fund balance that the county board took a leap of faith and provided to purchase those 333 acres. We recouped the entire investment. We upgraded our emails and phone system and voting system, didn't we, Chris Lewinsky? And of course, that continues to be a work in progress, but it's a far more efficient system today than it was years ago. What about that strong track record of fiscal responsibility? Well, that year we had a 1.83% increase in the levy. And the transportation facility was completed. And then in 2019, just last year, strong track record, fiscal track record, we had a 2.41% increase in the property tax levy. Essentially, we've been capturing the net new construction or what the state allows for us. If you look at the last 10 years of what the county board and our organization has achieved, we've had on average a 1% increase in the property tax levy. We have been leading by example when it comes to fiscal responsibility. Rocky Knoll maintained their five-star rating and they're adding childcare. Adding childcare, we're gonna try something different and see if that helps us recruit and retain staff. Construction began on the U.S. Terminal. 31 miles of county road were completed and Highway 23 broke ground. And we, Sheboygan County, weighed in on that and had some influence on getting that done. Behavioral health, use justice, child welfare programs were enhanced and our Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation achieved a 10-year milestone. Those are just a few of the accolades and accomplishments that collectively, through collaboration, we achieved. So for the seven new county board supervisors that are with us tonight, you're following seven people that have a combined 114 years of experience. And they did good work. You're going to do good work too. But know that you're you're joining a pretty successful team. So finally, though collaboration is key to our success and it requires all of us working together in a thoughtful and respectful manner, it does require strong leadership. So with that, if Chairman Wagner could come forward and I will very quickly hand him a modest plaque thanking him for his impressive leadership and dedication as our Sheboygan County Board Chair for the last four years. Would you please all rise and give Chairman Wagner a round of applause.
<laughs> Next, uh, adoption of the rules. Chapter 2, every two years, uh, the executive committee goes through the rules, and we probably spend a little more time on this than we have in other years, in all honesty. And um, a lot of it was just codifying what we've been doing and didn't always have them. There are some other changes. If anybody's got the same questions, we'll, we'll have that. But if I could have a motion to bring it to the floor. Uh, Supervisor Nelson. Uh, thank you, Chairman Wagner. I will move to approve the uh, adoption of rules. Thank you, Supervisor Zigobar. I'll second that motion. Thank you, Supervisor Zigobar. Are there any questions or comments that anybody has? Yes, sir. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had a question on under Finance Committee. Oh, it's just not page number, and I apologize for that. It's okay, take your time. Um, section K was struck. It said the uh, Finance Committee, it, sh it should be the duty and to make settlement with all officers and department heads at the end of their terms and or upon termination. Where was that moved, or what's changed there? Uh, I'll let our court counsel okay. handle that, if you don't mind. Is, can everyone hear me? Yeah, yeah I came without the mic. So, as Chairman Wagner mentioned, there were several changes that were made to Chapter 2 to bring it more in line with what the current practice was. That was one of the items that was identified as, as, a, as something that hadn't been handled by the Finance Committee. It has not been reallocated to another area. Um, to make settlement with all officers and department heads. So only the county administrator is involved at the end of a department head's term of employment with the county. It was something that was deemed no longer necessary under the finance committee responsibilities. Yes, and so to follow up on that, good question, thank you for that. Um, now it's following current practice. The department heads report to me, I have higher and higher authority in the rare instances where change needs to be made. Obviously, I'm having discussions with the executive committee or the HR committee, certainly the county board chairperson, but um, those matters are handled quietly and confidentially, and we move on, and, and again, I'm handling that directly. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. Any other questions? I'll make sure I see everybody. Okay. Do a voice vote. And all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Next, uh, as is custom here, and now we have in our rules, <laughs> I will turn the meeting over to our corporation counsel, Krista Fever, to handle the elections.
to be nominated, or excuse me, to be elected into that position. You should simply write the name of the individual that you are nominating or electing, any extraneous marks, or if it's uh, an unreadable ballot, you will not be able to count it. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Otherwise, I will open up the nominations for county board chairperson. Yes? Crystal, I hereby nominate Vern Koch for chairman of the Sheboygan County Board. And, and so our first, um, we will, if, if there's any questions about the process, I'll handle those. Otherwise, we will move into the secret ballot for the nominations. That will be the first um, thing that you write on your paper. The first name will be the nomination. And then we'll, we'll go around and collect them. I have three individuals who are going to be collecting them. We have some nets down here to promote social distancing. And I understand Elaine Bosman and Greg Schnell and Sheriff Corey Raisler will help us collect them tonight. So are there any other questions before we get to, to writing the nominations on your ballot? All right, hearing none, I would ask that each of you move forward with nominating a candidate for county board chairperson. Yes, Supervisor Hoffman. Vern Koch for chairman. Oh, no, we're doing all right, any other questions? And then maybe wave your arm if, if Greg and Elaine aren't seeing you or hold up your ballot. That's a good idea. So our nominations for chair are Vern Koch, Robert Ziegerbauer, and Keith Adler. Not for nominations. Supervisor Koch, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Koch accepts the nomination for county board chairperson. Robert Ziegelbauer. Do you accept your nomination for county board chairperson? Yes. Supervisor Ziegerbauer accepts the nomination for county board chairperson. Supervisor Adler, do you accept your nomination? No, thank you. Supervisor Adler declines his nomination. Yes, Supervisor Ziegelbauer. Supervisor Ziegelbauer wishes to decline his nomination. We will now pr proceed with the voting for the county board chairperson. We have one individual who's accepted his nomination, that's Supervisor Koch. I ask that you now proceed with voting for county board chairperson.
Supervisor Koch has received 25 votes to be elected as our next County Board Chairperson. We will now move forward with the nominations for the Vice Chairperson of the County Board. And again, you will be writing your nomination on your ballot and then our, our tellers will come around and collect those. So vice chairperson. Six nominees for County Boy Board Vice Chairperson. Those nominees are Robert Ziegelbauer, Keith Obler, Roger Chistrudi, Brian Hoffman, Ed Prochek, and Al Bosman. Supervisor Ziegelbauer, do you accept your nomination for Vice Chairperson of the Sheboygan County Board? Yes, I do. Supervisor Ziegelbauer accepts his nomination. Supervisor Obler, do you accept your nomination? Supervisor Adler declines his nomination. Supervisor Chistrudi, do you accept your nomination? I will decline. Supervisor Chistrudi declines his nomination. Supervisor Hoffman, do you accept your nomination? I will decline. Supervisor Hoffman declines his nomination. <coughs> Supervisor Prochek, do you accept your nomination? I decline. Supervisor Prochek declines his nomination. Supervisor Bosman, do you accept your nomination? I will decline. Supervisor Bosman declines his nomination. We have one county board supervisor who has accepted his nomination, that is Robert Ziegelbauer. I would now ask that you proceed with voting on county board vice chairperson. Twenty-five votes. Super 
Supervisor Sicklebauer is elected our next County Board Vice Chairperson. We have six nominations for the executive committee in the first position. We have Supervisor Adler, Supervisor Daring, Supervisor Prochek, Supervisor Gistrudi, Supervisor Hoffman, and Supervisor Dam. Supervisor Adler, do you accept your nomination? I do. Super Supervisor Adler accepts his nomination. Supervisor Daring, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Daring accepts his nomination. Supervisor Prochek, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Prochek accepts his nomination. Supervisor Chistrudi, do you accept your nomination? I will decline. Supervisor Chistrudi declines his nomination. Supervisor Hoffman, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Hoffman accepts his nomination. Supervisor Damp, do you accept your nomination? Supervisor Damp accepts her nomination. We have five individuals who have been nominated and who have accepted their nominations. I now ask that you proceed with voting for the individual that you would like to see on the executive committee. One vote, and we're going to do this three times for the three open positions. Or more. Or more, yes. We are voting for one individual.
50th anniversary of Earth Day, which was started by who? What? Gaylord Nelson. Gaylord Nelson. Gaylord Nelson. And there was a young man in the journalism department at River Falls with a eight inch zoom lens that I recall taking pictures of Gaylord Nelson on Earth Day. Would he be in the building? Thank you for that public, uh, public service announcement, Supervisor Bosman, bringing you back to our election. Um, we do not have a supervisor who has received at least 50% of the votes, so we will move on to round two. Supervisor Adler has five votes, Supervisor Gehring has 10, Supervisor Prochek has six, Supervisor Hoffman has two, and Supervisor Damp has two. So we will now move on to the next round voting for one individual, and we will continue doing this until one individual has at least 50% of the vote. So we're moving on to round two with the voting. Does anybody wish to decline at this point to continue on? Hearing none, we'll proceed to voting. Tellers are hard at work here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
nominations are Supervisors Obler, Damp, Prochek, Bosman, Nelson, and Hoffman. Supervisor Obler, do you accept your nomination? Yes, I do. Supervisor Obler accepts his nomination. Supervisor Damp, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Damp accepts her nomination. Supervisor Prochek, do you accept? I do. Supervisor Prochek accepts his nomination. Supervisor Bosman, do you accept? I will decline. Supervisor Bosman declines his nomination. Supervisor Nelson, do you accept? I will also decline. Supervisor Nelson declines his nomination. Supervisor Hoffman, do you accept? I will decline. Supervisor Hoffman declines his nomination. We have three supervisors for the second position on the executive committee, Supervisors Adler, Supervisor Damp, and Supervisor Prochek. I ask that you now move forward with electing the second supervisor to the executive committee. After round one of voting, Supervisor Adler has 12 votes, Supervisor Damp has four, and Supervisor Prochek has nine votes. None of the supervisors have received at least 50% of the votes, so we move on to round two of voting. <coughs> Unless anyone wishes to decline their current uh, nomination. Hearing none, moving on to the voting. I did hear that my predecessor used to tell jokes. I, I apologize, I don't have anything rehearsed for tonight. good jokes. He never rehearsed anything. Second round of voting, Supervisor Adler has 18 votes, Supervisor Dam has one vote, and Supervisor Prochek has six votes. With 18 votes, Supervisor Adler has more than 50% and is elected to that second open position on the executive committee.
nominations for this last round are Supervisors Prochek, Damp, Ruber, and Hoffman. Supervisor Prochek, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Prochek accepts his nomination. Supervisor Damp, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Damp accepts her nomination. Supervisor Gruber, do you accept? I decline. Supervisor Gruber declines his nomination. Supervisor Hoffman, do you accept your nomination? I do. Supervisor Hoffman accepts his nomination. We have three candidates for the last position on the executive committee. I ask that you move forward with casting your ballot. After the first round of voting, Supervisor Kochek has 16 votes, Supervisor Dam has 6 votes, and Supervisor Hoffman has 3 votes. With more than 50% of the vote, Supervisor Kochek has been elected to the last position on the Executive Committee. Okay, I promise to keep this as brief as Adam's speech. <laughs> but seriously, I am honored and humbled to be chosen the county board chair, whether this is your first election or your 19th election. I wanna thank you for the service you are providing to the citizens of Sheboygan County. Uh, we are in the middle of some very trying times with a number of challenges that will need to be addressed, including a uh, the economic turmoil that will undoubtedly be part of the fallout of the pandemic, the detention center population level, um, and trying to maintain services going forward. I am grateful that past county boards and their chairs have put us in a position to weather this storm by having a, by restra restraining spending and have a healthy reserve fund that we can draw upon. And we are also blessed with an excellent staff throughout county government at all levels that will help get us through these historic times. And at the end of the day, our mission has not changed. It's to provide courteous, responsive, efficient, and effective services to those we serve. I truly appreciate everybody's support. I am looking forward to working with seven new people. I found it very adequate that you used the Magnificent Seven. There was people that got together and helped the community. Um, I believe that's very important, and I truly enjoy working with this man on law, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to helping 
and working together with all of you. Thank you. And with that, the next order of business would be adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Is there any second? Supervisor Hoffman? Second. Thank you, Supervisor Hoffman. Okay, all those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned.